uh, welcome all here uh, for another session. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so let's begin with the word of prayer. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we praise you, we worship you, oh Father God. Thank you so much for this blessed and beautiful time that you have given for us. Thank you for watching over us in the past week. Thank you for uh, providing us everything, oh Lord. Thank you for the talents that you have given for us and maybe multiply that and share it with everybody, oh Lord. Lord, at this moment, we pray safety for everyone who's going through difficulties, especially all the war torn countries, Father God. We pray that the leaders will be filled with your presence and they would be able to take decisions which is benefiting for all of them, Father. So we pray and give them into your hands. We pray and ask you, Lord, that you will be with our families and help us to grow in you. And as well, Lord, you will be in the session and help us to learn something more, Lord. Thank you so much for everything that you do for us. We pray and ask all this in your mighty and precious name, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, people. So today we are going to do a uh, easy flower painting. So it's with the uh, flower vase as well as um, wet flowers, lavender flowers. And uh, inspiration is from uh, Mari Art Home YouTube tutorials. Uh, she's got very print, uh, very easy uh, paintings. And uh, you know, you can also go watch in and check it out. Uh, very simple, very nice, easy to paint across. Um, so that's what we are gonna do today. And uh, so for that, we need, uh, I'm taking an eight by 10 panel as always. For the eight by 10 panel, I'm putting it in a ver in vertical uh, layout today. Uh, so we'll be filling up this whole background with uh, purple, uh, which is, it could be either as a violet or it could be purple in your uh, palette. So with this purple, we will use um, white. So I'm using Montmartre's uh, white, which is titanium white. Uh, I am <laughs> the bigger one because my small one is all is all done. <laughs> So for the sake of showing it, I can show this is the white, okay? So I'm using uh, purple and white uh, for my background. So that's the color that will be, will be using it. And purple will also be used for the lavender flowers. So those are the two colors for that. And for the leaves, we you can use in any of I don't have a purple. I only have mauve in my um, colors. Violet? Yeah. I okay. only have mauve. You only have what? Mauve. M-A-U-V-E. Does it look like purple? Yeah. Okay, you can still use it, dear. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, you can use any type of this green. Um, I have in my palette, I have the flatto green and sap green. So I'll use this for the lighter shade. I'll use the flatto green for the darker shade. So if you have a light green and a dark green, you can use that. And we shall be using a little bit of uh, black for the pot itself along with brown. So it, you could be having a brown, which is light and the dark brown. Any of these browns can do. Uh, you can check in out like how to use the dark shade and the light shade. Okay, so those are the colors for today. Uh, along with that, the brushes. So for the background, I'm planning to use the sponge to show you how to use a different technique to give the background. So that's what we will be doing. Uh, so I'm using a sponge, which is like, you know, you get a bigger sponge and I'm cutting it off into smaller sponges and I'm gonna use it here, okay? so for the background to give a different technique and I'll show you how to do it. It will be very dry background that we will be doing using the sponge. If you don't have a sponge, you can use aluminum foil. What you have to do is take some aluminum foil, crumple it, and you can use the same way how we are gonna use the sponge. So either of these things will give you the effect what we are looking for. Uh, or if you don't have even a sponge, you can use paper as well. You would be getting that. Okay, so probably, you know, I'll try to show you if you have aluminum foil, we can do it with the aluminum foil. If you have sponge, we can do it with the sponge. Either of these things are good. If you don't have either, you have only flat brush with you, you can use flat brush as well. Okay, so that's for your background. And for the uh, flowers, we will be using Q-tips. Okay, so I have a couple of Q-tips, uh, so just make sure that you have at least two Q-tips with you. So one for your flowers and one for the leaves that we can use it. So we would be using the Q-tips. 
Uh, I'm using a filbert brush for all the extra fillers of the leaves and you know wherever I need to use it. Uh, you can use a round brush as well. Uh, and there is no you know set hard and fast rules that you have to use this particular brush or that particular brush for just to using for fillers. Use any brush which is handy for you. Okay, um, two containers of water. Always it's good to have two because you can have one for washing and one for using for the paint itself. Uh, so you don't have to keep walking around to get uh, water. Then um, have a napkin or a washcloth, uh, you know, some kind of a washcloth which helps you to kind of, uh, I know, uh, dry away the paint. Okay, so washcloth is needed. I think that's all for today. For painting and as well as the, I'm using a ceramic plate. You can also use a plate as or a foam plate or a palette, whichever comes in handy. You may use that. Okay. With that, let's begin. Uh, so just wanted to check in. Um, are I, do you want to try with the sponge or do you want to try with the aluminium foil? Let's try with the aluminium foil. Okay. So you have the aluminium foil with. Okay, so, so I have the aluminum foil here, right? So we'll use the aluminum foil. I have a small, I think this much is also enough guide, okay? This small piece of paper. I want you to crumple it so you get some textures, okay? See here, this is what the textures we are talking about. So with that only, we are gonna do the um, background here. So I have the crumpled aluminum foil. Now, I want you to take some purple or, you know, the uh, violet that you have. I'll show you how, how we are going to do that color here. And we need some purple more because when you're doing it on the background, we need it a little bit dark, a little bit light. And I don't want you to mix it with water. So just give me a minute. I will show you how much we need of white. And... I've taken purple and I've taken white here, right? Now, with your aluminum foil, first dip it into the white, then dip it into your violet, okay? So if you see, and what you're gonna do is hold your board. See, when you do like this, you will get a beautiful texture behind, okay? And that's what we are trying to bring in here. And I want the down part to be dark. So you can use a little bit darker purple down. I don't want, no, I don't want water there, but I really want that, what do you say? The paint to be put in there without showing up the white, uh, like without showing up the board color, board panel itself, okay? So go with your purple. If you have so much more, don't worry. Dip it into white. And if you're using a bigger uh, aluminum foil, you will be able to do it bigger also. That's again, up to you. And all we're trying to do is give, give a different texture for the uh, panel itself. For your for your uh, for the background. Okay, I'm just gonna hold it up here. And dab it like this so that then you can get the different textures. And I'm using a purple and I'm using white to bring that textures and colors out here. And I want the down part to be nice and dark. So even if it is a little dark, it's good. Okay, 
So this is what you get when you're doing it with your aluminum foil and keep doing it for the whole entire painting, for the entire background. Go. And if you want to give in a little more darker shade as well, you can give in. There is no, there is nothing that is stopping you from doing it. And in between, if you can just pull it up where the place of that flower was is coming up, it will give you a different texture altogether. See, even if you go like this with the aluminum foil itself, this is something that you can do it, which makes the whole background look as though that you've done so much of, you know, how you've put some matte structure towards it, you can do it like this. And this is what we're trying to get in. And this will, uh, what do you say? This will make your painting look much better also. Like, like last time we did the same kind of texture, but in a very different way. Go in circles, but I don't want any white in the panel. Like I mean to say like the panel color itself. Make sure that it's filled with white and your uh, purple. Okay, so here goes my colors. I, I want to give something very different in the background. I don't want it to be the same uh, what we do always. And try it in a different way, guys. It's it's you now that's what painting is all about. Even if you cannot dab it, it's fine. Go like this. But when you do it with the aluminum foil, the whole texture changes it instead of your brush. And this is what we need to be, I, I, I want it in the background. And when it, go, when it is going up, it is a little lighter. And when it is in the bottom, it is gonna be dark. See, so you should be able to get some wrinkly structure. So I showed you two ways to do with aluminum foil, either with dabbing or with doing like this. And you don't have to use lots of paint in this. Like I mean to say a lot of water or anything, it, you can still move the paint with the aluminum foil. See how it gives you a marbled texture. And that's what we are trying to get in. You can also do it with your palette knife. Okay, with your palette knife, you can make it like, you know, oh, as though it's like in between, you have so many uh, shades that's happening. So I'm just gonna have some more white and purple because my colors are out. And I want to make sure I give a little bit darker tone in between in the in the bottom part and if you want to tap it also if you give there will be the texture change and i'm trying to fill all the white spots here but go in a circular way, okay? Then you get that, uh, it, it comes out beautiful also. And now you should have your background filled up in circles or in uh, like, you know, a bumpy kind of a way. Wherever you find the panel itself, looking out, make sure you fill it up with your uh, paints.
and bottom is a little bit darker than the upper portion. So my painting is all, my background is almost dried up because I didn't use any water, just the paints. Okay, and making sure I have a nice a darker, darker purple down and lighter shade up. So somewhat you should be having similar to this or closer to this. And in between, make sure that you go run around, uh, put some whites on the uh, top part. And again, in a circular motion, because that gives a different feel and texture for the whole uh, background. And that's why I, I just ask you if you can. And even if you dab it now on top of it also, it, it may look different. See? So all, you, all we're trying to do is give some different texture to the background. We don't want to do the same thing what we did every time. So change the way how you want to show it. And I'm putting some white in the center because I want the light falling up uh, more in the center here. Okay. So it's not too purplish because I want the flowers to look better also. Just in the center, a little bit more uh, for the purple, uh, in the, for the white, with the more better than the purple. Okay, that's all. Nothing more, guys. I think I'm kind of okay with my background here. Keep the aluminium foil just like that. We will be needing it. So just keep it aside. And so now it's almost kind of uh, done. With this, we will be doing our. Uh, uh, flower pot now. So I'm going to take some brown. I'll show you the browns that I'm taking in. So I have the dark brown and I have the light brown. So you're painting where we are going to do the basis this part. So mine is dry. And I'm just using the brown, the light brown first, okay? I'm going directly onto the board. So I want you to pictureize, like if your panel is this big, I want you to take, to come to the part where you have at least, you know, uh, 50, more than 50%, okay? More than half of that uh, picture. So that's where we are gonna draw uh, our, not, like very closer to the 50, but little less. So probably uh, at 70% of that 50 itself. So I'll show you in my, okay. So this is my ruler, right? So it shows me like 20 and then, you know, it will be like 30 centimeters or yeah. So with that, I'm just trying to take in at maybe at 11, okay? So this is where I'm trying to, uh, put my, uh, the vase itself. It's gonna be just a, a small, uh, in a flower pot. And don't worry if you don't get the shape or anything, we can make it happen. Okay, and Okay, so I just, for me, when I'm seeing from here, I'm not able to see it properly. So now I'm gonna make it more better. So as I said, your flower, um, always I say, whatever you do is best. So if you want your flower pot to be, not to be too much of your slanting uh, flower pot or anything like that, it's up to you, you can make it.
And as you're doing it, make sure that, you know, you fill up that pot as well. And you, you're not using any other colors here because what happens, the violet and the purple and the white that is there will already give you a nice good texture. So I'm not using water. I'm not using anything now so far. With, the, with just my paint itself, I'm trying to uh, bring the colors in. Okay, so use a little bit of that brown. And if you want to do it a little bigger pot also, you can do it. Yeah. So it totally depends how big you want your pot to be in. I, I'm not going to say you want, you have to draw a smaller one or bigger one. However, I would say like, you know, just when you're, when you're, when, when we are going to put the uh, flowers in, we make it more proportionate to it. Okay. So I just want to introduce the little bit of the darker shade here. This is my darker brown. And again, I'm not using any other colors. I'm just trying to play with the colors which is coming out from the board itself, okay? I, I'm trying to uh, kind of give in a small rough and tuck texture of a little, you know, textured pot here. And I'm using a darker brown, that's all. Okay. And for any earthenware, when you see in your pots also, the earthenware is always not very uh, preci precise. There is no, it will not be very straight. It will not be kind of, um, it will have the rough ends always. So try to bring that in your painting as well. Just imagine like a pot, how you have seen it, or, you know, um, I'm sure you, you must have seen a pot. So when you're seeing it, how, how it looks like, right? and slowly bring that colors out. When you're trying to move the paints in there, you would be getting this kind of a uh, texture and shades. And that's all I'm trying to do. I'm not introducing any other colors. Colors, it is just my brown. And whatever the color was there in. and trying to put some, and we will do some highlights of white so that the light can be shown out also. See? And this part, try to move the paint. As I said, we are trying to uh, give in textures using the colors here. And introduce that. So 
So when we finish this part, the part should look like as though it's nice and earthen. That is just to show a little bit of dent there. I'm using a little white here on the in that portion. Just introducing a little white so that that uh, you know the rich can be seen much better. And when you're highlighting like this, the, the painting looks much, it, it just brings out that light which plays there. Okay. I'm not doing anything else. All I'm trying to, I just introduced the white there. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing across the, uh, this side as well. And then bring that white down here. And I'm making sure my flooring is good. Okay. And when you're putting any shades and paints, go in the same direction, guys. Otherwise, what happens is like, you know, it looks really uh, bad. So I'm just using my darker brown and then bringing it down, the shades and stuff. So in my pot color, it looks very uh, distinct. I can see that there is a brown, there is a light brown, there is white. Okay. So if you're seeing like this, then it is good. Yeah, and I'm just trying to make sure my pot is not too zigzag or anything, at least to make sure it is, it's there, okay? I'm hope, yeah, my sound is all there. <laughs> just wanna be checking that because it, it happened to me that I keep talking and then realize that it's on mute. Uh, okay, so I'm just introducing a little bit of that lighter brown shade. What I'm trying to do is making sure my pot looks nice because this is all about the flower pot and the flowers that's gonna come out of it, right? So you want, we wanna make sure that it's really looking nice. I just wanna make sure my bottom is straight. Okay, yeah, it's almost looking. My pot is almost fine. I just have to fill up some little bit of white there to bring the light color, light into the picture. Okay. So using the white, what happens is like, you know, it brings in the lighter shade, but also shows us that there is a light there. Okay. Just a little tint of white to go in, not too much. Okay, that's it. And to make sure the white is seen in the upper portion as well. Okay, so I think we are quite good with the highlights here and there. And you can use your fingers as well if you want to. There's no 
it's not like you have to use it. Okay, so it's almost, it's okay. I'm fine with it. Maybe a little bit of darker tint uh, just in this side. So I'm just using my dark brown. Okay. So it just gives you that, you know, uh, the flower pot in a way it can. So I'm just gonna wash my brush off. I'm okay with my pot so far. If I have to give something more, I'll come back to it later. I'm gonna let it dry now. And as I'm drying it up, I'm just washing up my brushes, brush here. And I wanna make sure I give my, uh, the pots shade also here very well. So using a dark, the purple darker purple, I'm just gonna make sure I'm gonna give the shadowy part here. Okay. Just using the darker purple. I'm not doing anything else, guys. I'm just using a darker purple. Just closer to the wall of that, um, you know, the flower pot itself. And after you've done it, probably you can use your aluminum foil, which you have just to scrape off that paint. So that it looks just like how we can do it with your aluminum foil itself, the darkness. I didn't use it on the first, first bit itself because that's not how I wanted it to be. Now using a little bit of white, what I'm trying to do is, you know, just to bring that shade out. So like how we did it for the before. Okay. So that becomes like, you know, there is something happening with that. Either you can do it with your brush or with your aluminum foil. So I've shown you two ways of doing it and you can go very closer to the pot itself and do it, okay? So what happens here is it gives a nice, beautiful dented way of uh, giving you that uh, shadow. And a little bit of white, just to blend it along with that whole picture itself so it doesn't stand out so much. That's all. So the flower pot's shadowiness has also been gotten with the purple, okay? So we are kind of good with this. And if you want to just highlight it more with that, uh, uh, brush you can do it so the flower pot is done your shadow is done background is good wipe off your brushes now take your um take your um what do you say the q-tip and dip the q-tip into your uh, first the dark layer we'll go with the dark layer into your uh, violet like the the purple that you have here, okay? So first layer is the dark layer that we are gonna give for this purple flowers. So your flowers can be in any way you want to give it. The first layer is the dark purple one. So that's what I'm trying to do it here. And go in dot dot mom, uh, in, the, in that way. So that, you know, um, because if you see a lavender stalk, it is all, it's all very, very small, small dot dots.
So make sure you give some space in between to show that light, that white that we have given it there. And even if it's going to pick up in this thing, it's fine. Give some gap, like not too big, but at least some. And your stalks will not be the same height or anywhere. In between, we will be filling up with color, so don't worry about it. And whatever color your stick is going to bring with your um, Q-tip is bringing out, it's fine. Like whether it's going to be too dark, light, we will be anyway doing it on top of it. So now for now, you do the first layer. And your stocks can be however you want to give it. And I'm doing it with the dark purple first for the first layer. If you're patient enough, do it nicely so that your uh, class can be seen well. Okay, so one stock can be more bigger. It's very, very simple painting, uh, uh, guys. It's not so difficult. Anybody can do it. Okay, after you've given your darker shade of that. Okay. So I'm like, you, you can, you know, as I said, be proportionate enough to do it, like however you're do, doing it. Not too big, not too small. It should be within that flower pots content of how it can hold up, right? That's what we are trying to bring in. Now using your white, go on top of that darker layer that you have put in. Again, dot, 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 dot. Okay. Just go in between. Sometimes it might become lighter shade of purple. That's fine. And that's what we're trying to bring in here. Okay. And if it is too light, maybe make sure you put in some purple. Okay. See? Because we want a light shade, we want a dark shade. And then if you cannot bring that light shade, then you can use that white. And you're using only the same Q-tip. I've not changed my Q-tip yet. It's all the same purple and the white, okay? And give nice big bold white also in between. If it is too bold, as I said, we can use purple. But go over the same stock, like, you know, how you put the purple on, on top of that. so that the flask can look, there's a shade of white, purple, light color. Okay. So you should have something like this, a darker shade, a lighter shade. In between there is white. Good. Now, 
we've done the first layer, the second layer of the purple flower, so it's okay. I want you to take the stalk and I want you to take your green. So I want you to take uh, the light darker green. Okay, again, the same way I'm gonna put it into my palette here. A little bit of green. And I'll show you how we are gonna do the green stock here. So using my green in my Q-tip, Okay, and make sure while you're doing itself, you're giving a darker shade in that flower pot space so that green can show out well. Okay, and this I'm giving it with a darker green, okay? Make sure that green is into that base of the base of the flower pot itself. So that color is kind of merged into that violet. Can you see the difference there when you start merging those colors in? Because you've already have the white there and you have the purple. So that itself will take hold of the colors to make it more lighter and darker. And slowly introduce that darkness. And slowly drag your tip q-tip up and down so it doesn't become like you know there's so much of dots but that it brings out that leafy texture itself if you if you get what i'm trying to say here because the first dot when you when you put the dot dot it, it is looking nice. And then now slowly stretch that dot to the straight lines. So that you can give that leafy texture. And when you start pulling out that colors, you will get that green, you will get a purple there. Yeah, and slowly introduce some white so you can give a lighter shade if you want to give in. Or if you have the light green, you can give that as well. I'm just using the green, the white. So you can use either ways, light green, or you could use white. And all I did was to make sure that, you know, after putting the dark layer. Okay. So you should be having something like this. And if your uh, dark white is so prominent, then use the little bit of darker green. If the paint dry, when the paint dries also, we can make it a little more darker, okay? So now going up, I take my purple and white. I see that I can use a little bit of darker and lighter purples there. So I'm just gonna fill up more. Okay. In between those greens, so that, you know, it is seen as there is the flowers that's coming out. 
Then you see that, and then I'm going to fill up my more of my making sure my lavender flowers look nice. And there is lots more happening with it. And in between, give some white so the texture is there. Okay, this is a very, very simple painting, guys. Very simple painting, no hard work, but I wanted to bring you in some techniques to show you how you could do some purples and whites or how you could do a lavender flower. Okay. And make sure that there is like, you know, you bring us the flowers coming out in a different uh, texture mode so that, you know, there's a difference between what you're putting in the first layer. There's a difference between the flowers that's coming out. So I'm using white and purple only. I'm not, I'm not doing anything else here. And I'm just going to make sure I put some lights. So it highlights it very well. Whenever you add white to a painting, it will bring out that highlight beautifully. This is what I am trying to bring in here. Yeah. And then if you want to give in a stroke of one, two layers of this like this, just in between so that it looks like it's filled up completely with that violet flowers. Just in the background, very lightly. And then maybe dots here and there. Just giving it as a background shade kind of thing, right? When you have so much of flowers, what happens in the background? We see that shady part coming up and that's what we're trying to do with this one. Yeah. So that's it guys. Of a flower pot with violet, with the lavender colors. It's come out well, as far as I see. And I'm just gonna give in a little bit. If you, you can also give in a little bit of black if you need to give, but I'm just gonna make sure that I use a little bit of darker brown into my dark green to bring that black texture, to give a little bit darker hue in the leaves down. Just a little tint, because you know when it comes very close by, when it is on the um, just on the top of that particular uh, vase, it I just want to give a little darker tint. So I just mix up with my dark brown because it's already there in my palette. I don't want to take a new color now. I'm just mixing up that, and then I using that. You can use black also, but this is fine. Okay, so make sure you pull up that colors up and just don't leave it. As I always say, there should be a connection between your painting and the colors that you're adding in. Okay, so, and a little tint of white in between so it can highlight it well okay 
that's all. And if you see, it's kind of, you see that whole vase with so much of colors. You want to write some writings here. You can do it here anywhere for that matter. You can always kind of do it. And I'm just gonna see if I can uh, do some, if I do some white here, how does it look like? I'm just trying to see if I can introduce the shading part better off with my with my Q-tip. Ah, oh, it's not bad. Maybe, yeah, just to give that little bit of rough and texture there. So I'm kind of happy with my uh, with 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 the leaves and everything that's come out here. Uh, probably, maybe you know. I'll just try to, yeah, I think something like that, so that it doesn't look like the leaves are all standing just like that. Okay, I think that should be okay, good enough. And yeah. Okay, people, so our flowers are good. And if I want to just bring in a little bit of darker purple, because when I see, I just, because this purple flowers are all those dots, right? In between, if you put those dark colors, it will just highlight it more. And only in the stalks, okay? Make sure that when you're putting it, it's in the stock form. So that the highlight is, seen well. Okay, and maybe a little bit of white to go around. so that you show it as flowers itself. See? That's, that's with your violet and your purple, like, you know, the whites and how you want to give in. And I've done only with violet like the purple, white. I didn't do anything else, guys. So your dark shade, your light shade, everything is with the same colors you can give it. Okay, and wherever, if you want to give it more better than your background, you can. If you want to highlight it somewhere, yes. Go ahead and do it. But basically, my flower is okay, and I'm kind of okay with it. I don't want to do anything more towards it. Uh, maybe in between. Okay, just a highlighted portion of purple and. Just, just in between so that the colors can come out very vibrantly well. If it is too dark, just introduce that white and the purple in between. Okay. So this actually, you know, kind of, uh, it highlights it more better with a little bit of purple here, there. So you have to bring that difference between your colors here. And that's what I've done. So I just wanted to introduce how you can use an aluminum foil in a different way to give your background, how to do the simple yet easy lavender flowers. You don't have to do too much of work in this just with your Q-tip, making sure you do it. Okay, so that's it. 
painting is as simple as possible. You know, it's not so hard work. It's very simple and you can keep it as an abstract painting out or if you want to do it in a different way, you can. So, uh, you know, I, all I am trying to introduce is like, you, everybody can paint and you can. Okay, uh, I'm just trying to see wherever my paint is getting dried up. How does it look like? It's okay. Okay, so the lavender flower pot is good and uh, good for me. I don't want to do anything more towards it. The leaf is seen, the greens are seen well. And yeah, probably I'll just make sure there is more colors here so that that green is not looking too much outside. So wherever you see that if it's too much of a color, make sure you introduce the background color more. Then it 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 will just blend into it. Okay. So that's it, guys. I'm I'm sure it's you are able to do it. It's more easier. I'm just gonna stop my recording and then I can take in any questions that you have. So this is for this week. Next week, we shall do something similar, but in a different and an easy way, okay? <laughs>